The following video is the third installment on the basics of shoulder arthroscopy. In this video, we will discuss lateral decubitus patient positioning and operating room setup. Our disclosures are written here. The benefits of lateral decubitus positioning for shoulder arthroscopy include traction improving visualization and instrumentation of the glenohumeral joint. When compared to beach chair positioning, there is also a lower risk of cerebral hypoperfusion, improved ease of arm rotation and posterior scapular access, low risk of mechanical blockage from the head, and air bubbles floating laterally out of view. Setup and positioning. A beanbag is placed in the center of the table and then covered with sheets. Once the patient is asleep, they are flipped to the lateral decubitus position and centered on the beanbag. The sheets and beanbag are positioned so that the beanbag is at the medial border of the scapula. Air is evacuated from the beanbag so that the patient is held firmly in place throughout the case. An axillary roll is placed to prevent injury to the brachial plexus. Pillows are positioned below the down leg and between the knees to pad all bony prominences and potential areas of nerve compression. The patient is then strapped to the table using one strap across the chest and one over the upper thighs. These are secured tightly, ensuring the chest strap does not obstruct the surgical field. On the opposite side of the table, the arm is secured with an articulating arm holder and the ulnar nerve and elbow are carefully padded. We take care to ensure anesthesia has appropriate access to the arm throughout the case. The patient is then rotated 90 degrees. An arm bolster is placed on the opposite side of the table and then positioned appropriately. Once it is secured, it can be moved out of the way to allow for appropriate draping. A mechanical arm holder will be used to apply traction throughout the case. This is positioned on the opposite corner of the bed, as seen here. The patient is typically positioned with a posterior tilt of about 20 to 30 degrees so that the arm becomes vertical when traction is applied. An examiner anesthesia is then performed. We are then ready to proceed with prepping and draping. The patient is prepped in the standard fashion. U-drapes are placed above and below the arm to secure it circumferentially. An impervious drape is then applied and wrapped all the way around the shoulder, taking great care to ensure that the entire scapula is prepped into the field. A sterile sleeve is placed over the mechanical arm holder, and the same is repeated for the bolster. The arm is taken out of the prepping suspension and an impervious stockinette is placed over the hand and arm. This is rolled up beyond the level of the elbow. The appropriate arm holder is then strapped securely into place. Great care is taken to ensure this is secured tightly to prevent slippage and loss of distraction during the case. The finger strap is then applied in a tight and secure fashion. Afterwards, the arm is wrapped very securely in coban. The coban covers the entire arm holder, stockinette, and extends to cover the skin of the patient. This is all done in an attempt to minimize slippage. The exam under anesthesia is then repeated. The edges of the drape are prepped out with sterile Ioban. The arm is placed in the mechanical arm holder. It is secured and then traction is applied in a distal and anterior direction. The arm bolster is then brought into place to provide a laterally directed force on the humerus. This increases the glenohumeral joint space. An additional drape can be used with a split cut in it to wrap around the arm bolster. This is secured using small strips of Ioban. This helps provide additional protection of the sterile field and keeps fluid from invading the space of the anesthesiologist. Anyone participating in draping then changes their gloves. The pedals are appropriately positioned, as are the arthroscopy screens and the patient's images, for optimal access and visualization during the case. Here is a view of the final setup at the end. This concludes our lateral decubitus positioning and setup. Thank you for your time and attention.